In September 1973, Israeli intelligence observed a buildup of forces along the Syrian and Egyptian front lines. It was not viewed seriously. A month before the war, we got similar information. And the army and the leadership took it very seriously. And then nothing happened. So when it came the second time, it wasn't taken seriously. At 2 p.m. on Saturday afternoon, Egypt and Syria launched their onslaught. Tens of thousands of Egyptian troops crossed the Suez Canal. Most of the Israeli line of fortresses along the canal collapsed. The Egyptian forces appeared unstoppable. They had the feeling that they are winning our forces for the first time, suddenly felt that they cannot stop the Egyptians. The morale was so high of everyone, even who lost his sight, even who was with amputated legs, but very happy that he has done something for his country. In the north, Syrian artillery troops and armor blasted Israeli positions on the Golan Heights. Israeli tanks were outnumbered 10 to 1. The north of the country was at risk. Israeli armored forces stormed across the Sinai Desert to retake positions. But Sagar rockets fired by Egyptian infantry proved deadly against the Israeli tanks. Previously undefeatable Israeli pilots now faced a new reality. Egyptian SAM missiles brought down dozens of Israeli jets. I remember coming to the canal when I arrived in my uh, division after 24 hours of uh, the, going without tanks across the desert on chains. I saw a young officer. You know, he said he looked at me, it was, you know, was like that. Um, as he could not believe, he said, we cannot stop them, we cannot stop them. Egyptian and Israeli tanks engaged in the Sinai. It was the largest clash of armor since the World War II battle of El Alamein. The Egyptian advance was contained. In the north, Israel turned the Syrians back to the 1967 lines and then continued to push deep into Syrian territory. The turning point in the south came when General Ariel Sharon decided to attack the Egyptians from the rear. The building of the bridgehead across the Suez Canal took place under a massive artillery barrage. It was a terrible night. I think that that night we lost, for my division, about 300 killed and uh, around 1,000 wounded. And all of us from soldiers to the divisional commander, we all were fighting there. It was maybe the most terrible night I've ever seen. Sharon's plan succeeded. Israel advanced into Egypt, cutting off tens of thousands of Egyptian troops in the Sinai. A ceasefire came into effect. The price of war had been devastating. 2,700 Israelis killed and thousands more wounded. More than 18,000 Arab soldiers had lost their lives. It was war, really, of soldiers. Because the courage and the sacrifice that they had to show was unbelievable. They did it. I speak about uh, fathers of four and five and six children who were fighting. And I may call it even the war of fathers and sons. That history Israeli and Egyptian officers signed a ceasefire. One day that the initial step towards understanding, reconciliation and peace in the Middle East began here at kilometer 101. The 1973 war left Israelis grim and somber. The dead and wounded 
the grief and shock had taken a heavy physical and psychological toll. Soldiers and officers returning from the front were bitter. Many staged demonstrations. They asked who was responsible, 